Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the video. Welcome back to my stream and just welcome back everybody. Well, it's been about a week since my last video and I haven't been doing too much. Um, although I do have some news and uh, that news would be I got an airbrush kit and so I now have an airbrush um, and I bought a bunch of paints and so I am going to finally transition to using airbrushes to paint my model kits instead of the old rattle cans but don't get too excited I'm not going to do that right away yet and I'm don't think I'm going to bother doing that with the current build I'm doing, which is the F15C 132nd scale by Tamiya. Where's the box? That would be this little guy right here. Oops, hit the mic. Sorry about that. Um, this guy here, the 50, F15C Eagle by Tamiya. Um, we're continuing that today. Um, but I figured I'd just kind of give you a little rundown. As you can see here, I got myself a little P0. This I'm just going to be using for practice uh, with my airbrush as I get used to using it and all that fun stuff. I have my little Spitfire here that I also use for testing out. As you can see, I was testing out the different colors for the... Uh, avionics bays on the uh, cockpit of the F-15. Um, testing out the blue and the green and see which would look better or worse or whatever. Um, I did actually put a little bit of white in my airbrush and uh, tested out uh, painting this and didn't do too bad. I got a little bit of splotchiness right there because my technique needs to be a little refined. Well, it's all, what do they say, part and parcel to it? Um, yeah, so yeah, I just thought I'd mention you guys. I've got an airbrush now. Um, but of course, I still need to go through all my um, aerosol cans because I do have a lot of them. So I want to use those up. I don't just want them to go dry on me and just sitting there or whatever. So I still am going to use them. I'll do airbrushing. Maybe on the one of my tank builds, I'll start doing that kind of stuff and getting into the camouflage kind of things and, and stuff like that. So... What are we doing today? I'm going to put some of these little things aside so I can get at my instructions. We still have our fuselage, front fuselage uh, sitting here because this is done for now. Um, here's our instruction book for what we're supposed to be doing. Today I think we're going to be doing the engines. So. I spent the last week working on these guys, getting these guys together. Now, they're not glued. They're not actually together, see? So, I haven't, uh, I haven't done that. So how do you like the airbrush versus the spray cans? Well, you all, thank you for asking. Um, because the airbrush is still very new to me, I haven't really used it much other than painting on my little Spitfire here. Um, the first thing I would notice is there's much less overspray when using the airbrush. So my big canvas here, as I start using the airbrush more, this is going to get a lot less paint on it. Um, that's right off the bat is the first thing I noticed using the airbrush versus a spray can. Much less overspray. Um, controlling the amount of paint that actually goes on here seems to be a lot easier with the airbrush. Um, but that's gonna, still going to take some practice and learning the refinements of actually using the airbrush. But, uh, and of course, using the airbrush, there's the whole cleanup process. you got to clean it up and stuff like that. So it's like, it's not just grab the can, shake it up, spray, 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 lid on, done, grab another can, spray, spray, spray. It's, it's not like that. It's, you know, when you're done spraying, I've got to now run some thinner through it and I've got to clean it up and make sure otherwise the nozzle and everything will get all 
clogged up and well that sucks right so yeah that's uh that's that a little bit more of a process but i think in the end the airbrush is going to be a better choice um the particular one i got is part of um, a nice cheap kit uh, on amazon and the reviews on this particular brush are mixed <laughs> a lot of people say this thing is garbage and after three or four uses they didn't don't even get it doesn't even work for them anymore um, my first test with it I ran to only ran thinner through it and then I ran some white through it and the white seemed to be okay I just made sure that I cleaned it up nice um, although my little cover here seems to have a little bit over oh no that's just dust <laughs> I thought I had white on there but it's just dust um, so yeah it came with just pretty much everything I needed um, the thinner that I chose well I I watched quite a few YouTube videos on what how to thin your paints and how to clean your brush and all this kind of stuff so I went with the mr. color leveling thinner got that or even writing my own little notes how it contains a uh, retarder in this so the paint will dry a little bit slower and I got the mr. color rapid thinner and wrote on here this is for metallics because it dries faster um, I got what else did I buy? I got airbrush thinner. This guy here from Vallejo. I got this. And I got the airbrush flow improver. Now this one, I, when I bought this, I figured, okay, this is going to be good to use. But after reading, watching videos and stuff on this, this would actually be better used for using this, using the Vallejo paints and actually just using it to brush with rather than um, spray painting because this also has a retarder in it but it's I need to add regular thinner to it if I'm going to use this with a spray now that's no that's not from experience that's just what I've watched on YouTube videos so I'm not going to use this when I'm spraying. I'm just going to use this stuff for when I'm brushing because it, it has a retarder in it and it helps the paint flow a little bit because their paints tend to be a little thick. Their model color variations tend to be pretty thick and I find that they dry on me quite fast, which is why I went and bought, um, originally I bought Vallejo Retarder Medium um, in this bottle but this is like a gel and I didn't like that. I don't want my paint thicker, right? So I had bought this stuff. Uh, got this one from Amazon. Uh, Galeria um, fluid retarder. And this is a nice thin liquid, um, which I talked about that last time. But anyway, but I think for the most part, the thinner I'm going to be using with my airbrush is this stuff. I think this is going to be my go-to, and this is the one I'm going to be spending all my money on. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, so that's enough about that. we got to build this model. we got to get her together. So, I spent the time. I didn't want to paint the inside of this um, just regular flat white. So I went with the Insignia White. That's the AS20 from Tamiya. It's just not quite white. <laughs> if you compare... The flat white that I use on the, uh, um, there's there's a decent angle to, to see the difference, kind of, sort of. Camera kind of, it's not quite right. Let's try this. You can just barely tell. It's This one's just not quite the same bright white like this, right? So, that's why I chose this one to use on the inside then after the white was done I took the black panel liner and painted all black and then I left it overnight left it for a day so I could just let the paint just sit and dry all the way and then I just take my um, 
my white spirit thinner cotton nub and did some nice streaky lines through there to get those lines if you look at the f15 engines and all kinds of different reference photos you see what they look like and so that's what i did and i did the same on the inside of this of course the camera's going to be kind of hard if i do it that way you can see the lines on the inside there or here right did all that and so they're ready to go together painted the outside just black and I noticed that uh, a lot of these things it's almost a glossy finish on these so I did paint it with a semi-gloss uh, I don't know where I put it right now it's over there um, so I sprayed the sprayed it with a semi-gloss I did go in between them it's gonna be hard to see on the camera I keep dropping them uh, let's see you can kind of see um, in between there that's a little bit lighter color so what I did, I noticed on a couple of reference photos that you could see a little bit of the bluing of the steel in between the plates. And that's where this came in. The AK True Metal. This is the metallic blue. So I just painted a little bit in there and kind of wiped it off on there and did that in between each panel along there. So that's that. And that's what I did. That's basically it for the past week. But now it's time to put this thing together and start assembling this. I have all my little parts of this, these little rods. I did all these in the gun metal. And the same with these little angle thing they would do is. So the first thing we're gonna do, according to his, um, is we're gonna put these little rods on. So how do these go on? Flip these all over to the right side, and we've got these little rods. And they gotta go on. So first thing first, let's get them off of here. And I wanna put them in a spot where I'm gonna see them easy. Depending on how this gunmetal contrasts against the black, I might wind up putting a black wash over these parts. This, I kind of, I wanted to have that bit of a metallic sheen. That reminds me, one of these days when I'm at the hobby store, I'm going to have to ask about a graphite pencil to see if they have one. Because that would help. I could rub the, the pencil over them to get that little bit of a metallic sheen. I see uh, Night Shift does that a lot on his videos um, using the graphite pencil. He always says that he hates using it, but that he uses it a lot. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, I think it's just about time I change my glue. It's looking pretty murky and uh, I did buy a new one. I bought a new glue. And of course, there's the new one compared to this murky stuff, right? Always gets like that. Cause you, you know, you paint, you're painting, you're gluing over some painted thing and then, yeah. Anyway, so these things, these little rods, they mount here and then they bend over and they mount there too. So let's see here. I don't know if they're gonna to wanna to sit in their spot without any glue first. That's basically how they're gonna sit. Now they might want it to sit up straight. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Okay, so I'm gonna have to put some glue on them and then put it on the part. On the part. So that's gonna mean you do this. I wanna clean up that spot 
on there, but I don't. I think I'm just going to leave it. Okay, so we have that. Put a little glue on that tip there and that tip there. There we go, there's one. Okay. I have a feeling I'm going to be going back to these with the thin set just to dab on those little spots to make sure they're actually glued. Because moving it to make sure it's there. This glue doesn't like doing that. And at the same time, it needs to be set so that it's at the right angle. seems to be good. Okay, next one. This is a little tedious task. Maybe I should have done this during the week, uh, at least on one of them, so that I don't spend the next hour showing you guys putting these on here. Which I mean, doing this for the next hour is fine on a stream. But, as far as YouTube content, it's not very entertaining, is it? <laughs> okay, one done for those. So they don't want the rods put on, these, these rods here. These aren't going to be going on until it's in, in that, okay? So the rods are going to be just left aside for now. I have another pack of these. I should have two more packs. Three more packs. Wow, there's a lot of these. Okay, so there's one. Yeah, because there's ten of these things, right? So let's get another one inside here. So I didn't realize that this was going to take me so long to do this. So. I'm going to edit my video before I load, upload this onto YouTube. Because, yeah, I think this is just kind of monotonous and it's not going to be fun for you guys to watch. So if you're watching this on YouTube, um, I'm going to fast forward this to get to the last one. So that you don't have to watch me fiddle with 20 of these little things.
Okay, so there's the second one. So I'll just show you a bit of a close-up if I can. Where's my cardboard? I don't know where my cardboard is. This will work. Okay. So that's what we got going on here. Those little rods going on there. Little mechanisms that are going on each one of those. So I've got eight more of those to go. Okay. So I'll fast forward the video to where I'm done. Okay. See you then. We're going to go to the thin set. Okay. Now, now, if you're watching on YouTube, we're back. <laughs> we're back. And yeah, uh, like I just said, I'm done, but I'm not done. I have two extras here, which is kind of cool. They gave me a couple of extras just in case. Now I need to go through. I want to dab each one of them with a thin set just to make sure they're all going to stay and stay forever. So I'll start with the first ones I did, which are these. I'll go through and I'll make sure that each one is glued in good. Sometimes in the process of actually putting them down, you wind up moving them just a little bit, and in the process of moving it, the glue just doesn't want to stick. And so this will just ensure that there's actually glue holding them down on all spots. And then we'll all be happy. Now as nice as it looks with the gunmetal, it's a nice contrast on there. I'm not sure how realistic it is. Seeing all the reference photos, like if you just Google F-15 exhaust nozzles, you'll see what I mean. It doesn't look like these things are silvery color or whatever. It looks like everything is just black. And that it seems to be, you know, they're not trying to make it any different color at all. So yeah, as a model kit, it's nice to have the different color variation because it makes the part pop, right? Visually, it, it you see it more. I want it only five. And so there's that, right? It's it makes it pop visually. It makes the part stand out. You see. From further away, it's actually a separate part on there. It's got that detail and it looks nice, but it's not necessarily realistic to the way it is in real life. And so you want to make that compromise. Um, sometimes the real thing just doesn't look as good when it's scaled down to a model kit. And so sometimes painting the parts in a color that contrasts a little bit actually makes it look better. Now that's not the case always, but sometimes it does. all of them. So now these go in here. Now they have a little tab that sits out in the middle right there. Okay. And they have five little slots that this all fit into. And so as you can see they're kind of um, you know they go like this and then like that. 
so they all fit in a specific spot and they fit just like that okay so now I can glue I can put some glue here or I can put glue on this end it's not going to make any difference so but I'm definitely going to put glue on the inside I don't I'm not going to bother going along this edge I'm just going to put a little glue here and I think that should be plenty I just go doink 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 it's probably more than enough to get that glued in there and that will just sit just like that okay and then you go around and you do that on all of them okay I think we're at a point where it's good This one wants to give me some grief for some reason, so I'm going to glue it here. Give it a little more glue, and that should do. <laughs> give it more glue, that should do it. This will do it. On the inside it doesn't look good, but on the outside it looks fine. So there we go. That's one ready for the rods. But we're going to put it aside and let it cure a little bit while we put these ones on. Just like so. I think we're doing good. going together, they're staying together, they're friends. This one I want to put a little bit here, just to help it out. Yeah, we're getting there. One more to go. One more piece. Okay. This one's going to be special because we're going to put glue there, put glue there, and here. So he glues to two friends at the same time. Just like that. It's a little bit tight. So hold it together. So I want to make sure. It all lined up nice. The glue's still kind of in its curing stage. That's perfectly fine. That uh, I've got a little bit of play and a little bit of movement to get the so it's a nice perfect circle with no big gaps. Just kind of hold it there for a second or two, and it should be okay. Which means I should be ready to start on the other one and. Uh, yeah. Okay, I think we're good. She's holding. Perfect. Another one done. Okay. Moving back to this guy. We gotta put the rods on. Okay. And these rods they go in between them. Now let's just make sure goes there and it goes there. So we attach them from from in between them. They go 
in between the pieces here on this, and they go out into these little sections. That's what it looks like. So, let's get our rods off. One. See, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, okay, I've searched YouTube for a video on this kit that shows the assembly of the exhausts. And I've seen one where they show the different, they're actually building the other style that has the turkey feathers on them. Shows them painting it. Um, but that's not these ones. I have seen one where they show him painting the insides a little bit. Um, but they show them painting them, and that's it. And of course, the one the, the kits that have the turkey feathers, there's no detail on them. There's no assembly like this, right? Um, and so there's not much to it. There's nothing to show. Um, I'm pretty sure when I upload this video, you're going to be seeing the first video on YouTube that actually shows the assembly of these engines. And that's me. <laughs> because I looked, I searched and searched, and I could not find a YouTube video that shows the actual assembly of these things. So, get my tweezers back here, where'd they go? There they are. So, we're going to take this, in that fashion, and it's going to go like that. i got to find the middle piece that's there, and that's where it goes, just like that. So, I'm going to be using the thin set to glue that down. I could actually use the the thicker stuff on the one end to help secure it. I'm hesitant to just lay it down like that because it might roll. That oh, might be okay. So I'm going to utilize both of these. Okay, so I'm going to put the thick stuff here. And I could do that too. Yeah, that'll work. That's kind of a terrible job I did on there. <laughs> but that's okay. I'm going to be hitting this all over the semi-gloss clear afterwards anyway. And that should tone down the, the sheen on the... on the gun metal a little bit. I'm really not happy with that metallic look. I can just use the panel line accent, panel liner, the black, and go over them. Let me make sure I've got them. No, I could see where you'd be tempted to paint all this afterwards. You just hit it with a black spray, paint the whole thing black especially based on a lot of the pictures that are available online. There's quite a bit of detail on this. I'm not sure if they even make a resin kit in the 132nd scale for this particular engine, for these nozzles. I really don't know. I haven't seen one. Yeah, I've seen them in the 48 scale, for sure. And it's possible in this 48 scale, you could be getting something better from it than you would from the kit part. Some of these pieces I'm putting on a little bit crooked. 
and I don't like that. They should be straight up and down. That's better. I'm happier with that. And I'm going to do the same thing with these. When I'm done, when I got them all on there, I'm going to hit it with the thin set just to make sure that each piece is glued on properly. Just about done. Well, just about halfway there. Yes, we got another one to do. Should I say one more? <laughs> okay. And that's it. That's one of them, guys. So, that one's done. I'll show you up close. Let me get my box here again. Okay. So, we're here. And that's what we're looking at. Okay. That's what we got. I'll even do you one more. I'm going to bring you in nice and close here. Okay. Uh, where are we here? I think it's this one. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. There you are. Nice and big. That's what we got. If I stay far enough away, it will stay focused. There's the inside again. Okay. That's what we're looking at. Okay. Just like that. All right. Okay. So, that's one. Okay. So, you guys watching on YouTube, you don't have to watch me do the other one. Because <laughs> I'm going to cut the paint, cut the video, and then I'll come back. Welcome back. We have the second one done. Now, the thing to do is just like I did with the other parts, I'm going to set this one aside, I'm going to bring this one back, and I'm going to go through with the thin set and just dab it on there just to make sure everything is nicely glued and it's going to stay forever and all that good stuff so i'm just going to dab in there and in there on each one go all the way around now how are you going to tell once you've gone all the way around well i'm not so i could try and count eight nine nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I think that's it. So I think there's 15 on each one, is my guess. That's my guess, is there's 15. Now these the front ones, they're all good. It's really just the back ones I need to do. Okay? you back let's see so I'm gonna guide myself like this thing and I'm gonna know it's that one there it's number one and that's it I'm done and there you go guys that is the assembly of the engine nozzles exhaust nozzles two done just like that okay now you know how it's done and I got two little extra arm guys there, and I've got a long arm that fell on the floor, and I don't know where it is, and I don't even care because I got them all. <laughs> and I've got one extra spare. So you'll wind up with two extra little guys and two extra little rods. Okay? As long as you don't drop them on the floor and look, 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 excuse me, and lose them. So that's it. I'm gonna check something out. How long have I been online here? Over an hour, Bob. Over an hour just to do this. Okay, so we're going to call it a day, just to do those engines, just to do those nozzles. So, as the plane's taking off, let's go over what we're going to do next. So next is, they want you to actually put them on there, but I'm not going to do that now, because there's a whole lot of painting to do, and I'd wind up having to mask these things off, and I don't want to have to do that. And with all the little rods on there, you know, it's going to be a little bit delicate. So I don't want to do that. 
Although it's going to look pretty nice. Let's get this guy out here. It's going to look pretty cool. Line up that tab there. Right? It's a tight fit. I've already test fit these on here. Kind of tight. There we go. Right? It's going to look pretty awesome. Get on it. I don't want to go on. There. Okay. It's going to look pretty cool when it's all done. Right? That's pretty cool looking. Once we've got that on there, these engines are nicely, highly detailed, and that's pretty cool. It's a much tighter fit than I expected. Anyway, that's it, guys. I'm going to leave it at that. You guys watching me on YouTube, why not head over to my Twitch? It would really be really cool if you would go on to my Twitch and subscribe to me on there and follow me there. That would be really cool, guys. Um, I noticed that it's just not happening. Obviously, my, my Twitch career is not taking off. It's dead <laughs> in the water, um, which kind of like makes me wonder, should, should I even bother uh, streaming on Twitch? Should I even bother doing this live? I don't know. Um, but anyway... Next, we're going to put these little guys on. I've already assembled them, okay? These go on the each tip, okay? They go here, okay? This one's going to go like this. You can tell I've primered this, and I haven't primered this. Um, one on one side, one on the other, okay? Just like that. And that's how they're going to go. Now, you notice one's round and one's pointy, okay? There's a reason for that. Now, to me, it's giving you the options. You can have both of them pointy or both of them both of them pointy or both of them like this, okay? This one is what they call the right spine and with ECM, okay? This little round guy is the ECM. I'm not quite sure what ECM stands for, but I think it might be electronic countermeasures. Let me know in the comments below if you know if that's true or not, if I'm right on that. But I think it might be electronic countermeasures. But anyway, I figured this plane deserves electronic countermeasures if that's what it is, so it's going to get one. So it's got the round one, okay? And we're going to have a couple of panels that are going to go on and they're going to cover up the screw hole, the screws there, okay? Because this is we're looking at underneath here, okay? This is the bottom. And they want a little arrestor hook that's going to go there. Of course, we have options on this too. Um, you can either have this little triangular guy that goes in the middle here, or not. Okay. Um, you can either have it there or not. Okay. Um, but anyway, that's that. And then it wants to move on to the wheels, and we're going to get into that next time. Uh, let's see here. Probably landing gear stuff. Yeah, landing gear. I'm putting the landing gear in. Okay, but before we do the landing gear, of course, we got painting to do. We got lots of painting to do. But anyway, we're gonna call it a day. Um, yeah, if you guys are watching on YouTube, why not hit the like button? It's like right about there or something like that. It's right down there. Just hit that like button and help me out. Um, helps out the whole freaking algorithm thing on YouTube, and it gets my gets me more views and possibly more subscribers and yeah why not subscribe too while you're at it if you're watching this why not hit the subscribe i think it's over here on this side somewhere this big red button subscribe yeah that'd be really cool too if you want to see still pictures of my stuff um i always when i'm finished building these things i always upload them onto my instagram take about you know three four half a dozen pictures of them upload them onto my instagram and you can check that out there too um, I'll put links down in the description box below and you can click on those links and you can follow me on Twitch and you can check me out on Instagram and you can follow me there too if you like. You can even go over to my Twitter and you can maybe send me a DM on Twitter if you feel like it. I don't know, whatever you feel like doing. Anyway, I'm going to call it there guys. I'm going to call it a day and uh, yeah, so thanks for watching and thanks for coming out and uh, yeah, so until next time, see ya.